Contagious Culture is a name I arrived at after some brainstorming with the combination of the pandemic, the protests spreading everywhere, and later with things like Dead City Punks throwing these outdoor shows with fire and going full renegade style. You started to see a lot of other people be inspired by that and replicate the same type of idea and throw their own shows. Those are the three things that I thought really reflected like a contagious culture. Can you tell me who you are and a little bit about what you do. My name is Esteban Orio. I'm a photographer and director, born and raised here in LA. Uh, my name is Sean, Sean Mong. I was born and raised in Los Angeles. My name is Erwin Racinos. I'm a photographer here in Los Angeles. My name is Raquel Rocky Natalikio, and I'm a photojournalist and photographer based out of Los Angeles. What's up, my name is Nate. Um, photographer here at Super Chief Gallery. Thank you, Bill. My name is Lolo. I shoot digital, but I started off with film. Hey, uh, my name is Raz. Um, I'm known as Dance Floor Murder on Instagram. Um, I'm a musician and a photographer. My name is Robert, uh, photographer, videographer. I'm from Los Angeles. My name is Gigi. I'm a photographer originally from Paris. My name is Jimmy. Everyone knows me as Bonks. I'm from Los Angeles, California, born on the east side. I first picked up a camera when I was in like the seventh grade, like 1997, 98. My name is Nichelle Daly, and I am from lots of places, but I got to LA via New York. My name is Ruben Preciado. Um, I'm 24 years old. I've been uh, taking photographs since I was like 17 years old on film. I'm Zite White. I uh, started as a photojournalist. Uh, internationally and currently I'm shooting a lot of wet plate photography. My name is Josh Klassman aka Bagel. I am a photographer from Venice, California where I grew up. I was really stoked to be in the Fuck the Likes volume 2 because it allowed me to show new photos of the world around me in Venice that I shot recently in the past couple years. I don't want to be that photographer who like wants to go to the big show because it's popular. You know, I don't like to be the guy who goes to the festival and shoots the band that's like famous, you know? I, I like to shoot the, the underground people, the, you know, the underdogs, I guess. Cool. <laughs> this photo really starts the whole story because this is when the old Super Chief Gallery LA got blown up by our neighbor's dab laboratory. <laughs> right after that, we moved out of there put everything in a storage unit, and the pandemic began. And so everything else that happened in the show transpired from this moment right here to present day, the return. These photos were all taken in 2020 at the beginning of the uprisings after the murder of George Floyd. I knew when I saw that video of like George Floyd dying, like I'm like, dude, like, like the world is about to just erupt, you know, because that's just, it was some shit, you know, like yeah. it's fucked up, you know, and like it's- And, and it's, everyone was at home. Everybody was at home, Nobody exactly. was at work. Nobody was at work, everybody was inside. Everybody just had to think about the way that this society is. Exactly. See what the fuck was going exactly. on. Exactly. Black Lives Matter happened. Um, I was actually downtown in Skid Row with hanging out by a tent <clears throat> with a friend, like we were chatting, smoking and I saw helicopters downtown and I was like, oh my God, I felt, cause you know, like a George Floyd had just been murdered like two days before. And I felt that something was gonna happen. Like, and I told my friend like, let's go, let's just go where the helicopters are.
people were coming out, like people that weren't in the, pro, in the march were coming out, like banging paws, being like, yeah, you know. And like a lot of the livery cab drivers, for people that don't know what liveries are, they're just regular cabs, not yellows or whatever. You can just like hail them. Um, and you know, people would like honk and support and he pulled over and he had a, you can't see it, but he has a guy in the back who's also doing it too. And he pulled over and I just snapped real quick and he was like, you know, honking the horn. And then we talked for a second and he was, you know, basically saying kind of what everyone was feeling at that time. Like he was like, man, like they just can't keep killing us like this. This was at a counter protest to a Trump rally that was happening in Tahunga. And the police very quickly <laughs> turned on the um, counter protesters and were shooting less than lethals and smoke bombs into the crowd. So I remember looking behind me and it just looking so like apocalyptic and just like pure chaos. There was like steam coming up and people like tagging like uh, buses that were going by and I turned around and the whole uh, Starbucks was completely like tagged up and busted out and people were looting it. And I, I remember just looking over and seeing this guy standing there like, he was almost like ready to order, and uh, the whole place was just complete disaster inside. And I was like, "Wow, this just has like, it's just like a crazy um, idea of reality right now. Like things, it just feels like you're in the upside down." This one right here was on Fairfax during the protests when everybody was, uh, you know, burning cop cars and like fucking shit up. It has 2020 written all over it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I thought that I would never ever live through like some shit like that in my lifetime, you know? I always like would just hear about stuff in the newspapers about like the 1992 riots and like all that stuff or, yeah, I don't know, it was, it was very like surreal to be there and like have that stuff happening in front of you. I almost didn't feel real in some way. It, it was great that we're all together. The unity was really felt and like the aggression of it, of, like towards it was amazing because I feel like it's not been highlighted enough. So it felt good, but in a way it's kind of like almost a little dark too because it shouldn't be happening. Right, right? But it had to happen. Yes, exactly, yeah. it had to happen. So it's something that had to happen, I feel like. And we're not done. That was so inspiring in that era because no one really like, everybody was kind of off work at the same time. Yeah. And I feel like in the history of protest in this country, usually it's kind of like, the students and the young people are out in the right. streets and all the older people are like, ah, fuck you, oh, get out of the street. Get off till six. Yeah, I gotta <laughs> go to work, you're slowing me down. Right. At least like in the era of like Occupy Wall Street and stuff like that in New York, it was often a lot of confrontation with commuters or, yeah. or people that felt like reform is impossible and a waste of time, so yeah. why would we ever do that? So basically 2020 hits and this is all just an extension of showing everyday people and showing reality without being caught up in, oh, this is for a brand. This is for clout. This is for this or that. Like, no, these are real people and we have lost touch with like everyday people. The pulse of LA, the pulse of New York is not in Soho. It's not in Silver Lake. It's in working class communities. It's in everyday communities. And all those fashion people, they're jacking this shit. They're biting this shit. So it's like, why not show the essence and pulse of American culture without having a brand on it? So I was like, no, I'm gonna be out there. I have more time to be out there. And I think we all deep down also wanted a human connection because we're more isolated at this point. When I was shooting these photos, like it was like, it was just natural, like, yeah, we're, we're, all of us are kind of isolated right now, all of us are kind of locked down, but this is an opportunity to make a human connection. Very cool, very cool. I like that you, you just added working class to that too, mm -hmm. because I do think that you're right. A lot of these brands, a lot of these culture vultures, they really do just try to steal aesthetics and culture from working class people mm -hmm. and sell it back to not working yeah. class people. They sell yeah. it back to the richer kids, the mm -hmm. middle class, people, yeah. it's that is as American as apple pie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and also the George Floyd rebellion, the protests, whatever you want to call it, you know, that was, no one saw those coming. Mm -hmm. And those, that was a national movement that was started by working class people mm -hmm. in Minneapolis mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that caught on and spread like, exactly. like, like wildfire. That was exactly. incredible. Yeah. I don't think anybody saw that coming Hell in the yeah. middle of like lockdown, pandemic, 
everybody just waiting for news. Yeah. It was yep. just like everybody actually had some time to, to sit and think about the world for a second, and they yep. were just like, wait. This, yeah. We're in the streets. Yep. We got to change things. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's it's important to document it because you know the you can't trust the media and you can't trust what you're being told from uh, the government, and mainstream media, and things like that. So it's like you have to, for me at least, it's my way of, of understanding it. And I fully support uh, photojournalists who have integrity to um, journalism ethics, you know, mm -hmm. and are out there documenting it because everybody sees it and experiences it from a different. Uh, vantage point, right? Mm -hmm. So it's very important to have as many people out there documenting as possible and as many people out documenting from different backgrounds and different experiences as possible because everyone's getting a different perspective, right? And then when you can put the, that perspective together, you're able to understand the bigger picture. What's really important in my development was just like, I was doing things that that I didn't think I would be doing, shooting protest photography. I, I've been around protests and and shot videos for labor unions, but this was on another scale, you know. Protests were happening all over the nation, and I think that it's important to go to these protests because it's there that you'll see the reality. They're kind of a sensitive uh, space, kind of like a funeral when you come to contact with family members and, and they get on the mic and they tell their stories. It goes beyond what you hear on the news. It's, it's live, it's right there, and it's emotional. It's a genocide on our black ass. Y'all better wake up. Y'all worried about the president? He ain't the motherfucking problem. It's these legislators that put these motherfuckers in office. Y'all better understand that the chief ain't voted in. He's appointed. The only person that's voted in is the sheriff. And he got a lot of motherfucking power because he can arrest a judge. Y'all better wake up. Stop letting these people give y'all these false narratives. But I can't tell y'all no false narratives when they shot 70 shots at my 18 year old. I gotta give y'all the truth. Uh, protesting and I've never gotten out there. It wasn't my thing as growing up, you know, a different era, different time. Um, but as soon as I saw some of the people on Taco asking me to go shoot and be a part of it, it got my interest. I wanted to see their perspective, see what they were talking about, what I'm missing out on, mm -hmm. uh, what I need to learn. Like this shoot, for I think for uh, the Sabalish Ice one that we went to, this was for the Kids for Cages. Yeah. I took my kid to that one and, you know, she learned something. We talked during the whole thing. I had her with me shooting a camera and it was a perspective I needed to, you know, just view see yeah. from my own point of view and not really get it from the news, not get it from anywhere else, just kind of dive into it, see what it's about, see what I'm missing and just learn. Yeah, that was really cool about that time is everyone was like, I don't want to hear this th from a, a mediated, no, from a media source. I just want to no, get out no. there and, and make a judgment. And it's mostly because you, you, you hear your other peers are telling you the same thing, they're giving you some information, so you really got to like, sift through it all and figure it out where you stand on it. And that's kind of what I did is went to that event, got a couple photographs, but really it was just to learn. And Going to like a, a big right wing protest in California is so funny just because I think California is like the chillest state ever. <laughs> and it's funny because like, especially at those protests, so Gavin Newsom um, issued a curfew that I think if I'm not uh, wrong, that you had to be inside by like 10 or 11. I can't remember the exact, it was like, but something around there. But it would be this group of like a thousand, uh, you know, lock, lockdown protesters, all like with their, you know, American flags and MAGA garb, <laughs> like counting down until like 10 p.m. And then they'd be like, fuck, do some, we're out here. <laughs> and then five minutes later, they would all just leave because they have jobs and have to go to work in the morning. But It was a bit overwhelming because there were so many photographers that it just felt like, I felt more like protesting than taking picture. And I just took them when it felt right, but I didn't, at the end of the day, took that many pictures because I felt this like overwhelm of photographers. Mm -hmm. you, were, you were more interested in participating mm -hmm. in the in the protests yeah. than than being there documenting like it was your job for the newspaper or something yeah, like that. Yeah, and also like I felt that was you know the time where it was more like black people that should like document their own story. So and I just yeah, it just felt so. Those were really I was literally in front of the city hall, and this it, it was just like. It, 
put my attention. I'm a huge fan of Nipsey, and he had, ju he had just died, I can't remember, like... Yeah, like two years, one, one year before. Yeah, and yeah. so... It I, was... I saw this guy down there uh, oh, you saw him? Many times really? with his Nipsey picture. And I was really excited that you documented that in such a cool just, way. You know, it's, I don't know, I feel like a connection to Nipsey is so much like everywhere in the city. There's so many murals about him that for some reason I feel like he's kind of a garden agent. Uh, I, I like to of think LA. the Nipsey Hustle is the patron saint of LA. Oh, really? I, this is something I like to say. Yeah, yeah. like a Catholic saint or something. I, I don't, and just like when I saw this, I was like, yeah, he's watching. During the COVID lockdown, I wasn't able to meet any new models because everyone was afraid to engage with other humans, especially strangers, and with good reason. So during that time, I just shot within my close, trusted bubble and kept everything as safe as possible. It's cool to see like you know, a lot of regular folks getting educated and involved and active, politically active for the first time all at one time. Yeah, I mean, it's a little frustrating that it's like the first time people are hearing about racism still exists, you know? And like, as a person of color, as a black person, it's just like, I, f I don't realize until I talk to some people, like the bubble that like other people actually live in and that they, because, whiteness is kind of like the default like if you hang out with all white people and those white people only hang out with all white people you don't ha know the experience of any person of color or like what is really like going on you know and so for me it was like mind-blowing that people were like just like waking up to this thing that's happening you know and it's just like i mean george floyd is like in a long line of people and you know his was very horrific but just as horrific as Trayvon Martin or you know Philando Castile like it's just never ending. This was one of the famous chants during the protests. Shooting at those times was a lot of fun but you know there was a lot of hecticness going on a lot of chaos you know a lot of people looting and I was at all these events where, you know, cars were getting lit on fire and people were getting bottles and bricks thrown at them and we were getting shot at with uh, rubber bullets, tear gas, flashbangs. I got little souvenirs from all that. I have the big canister that they used to shoot the rubber bullets out of. I got some of the rubber bullets. Got some I artifacts. I got one that was shot, shot at me, hit me in the chest. There was a lot of life going on in those times, and that's what keeps me going. That's what fires me up, you know? I don't know how I'd do if somebody told me to go do some Ansel Adams, Yellowstone Park type stuff. <laughs> I might be able to shoot like one or two days, and I might go crazy the rest. I need to be around, you know, the pulse of the city. I need to, I need to be around life. Yeah. And, uh, it was perfect for you. Yeah, this is downtown LA. There's a lot of life going on, and uh, especially in, when there's a pandemic and there's riots and protests and all that, like, that was a good time. LAPD had to break up an illegal party underneath the 110 and 5 freeways in Cyprus overnight. <laughs> This is a video of the party from the band Dead City Punk. LAPD estimate the crowd to between one and two thousand. This definitely looks like it was a planned party. You see the video on the right hand side. I knew there was going to be a show. I just knew there was going to be a show that was going to be the show that was going to define everything after supposedly we thought everything was ending, you know? Mm -hmm. And I saw that ad and I was like, I was like, man, I'm on, I'm on it. And then I saw the address and I was there. And by the time I got there, there was already like four or 500 people already showing up and the show hadn't even started yet. It was like a free concert 
super concert or something, man. The LAPD <laughs> helicopter was like the spotlight for the band. And it was like shining on the bands and stuff. And then the fireworks were going off with the helicopters. This spot, which for that night truly was a music venue for the people of Los Angeles. It got the attention of the news, the police. Mm -hmm. They came to try and raid the event and they obviously couldn't do anything. DCP was still performing and the cops were actually shooting people with freaking rubber bullets. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That's the day after the show. He yeah. posted that one on social media. And that's just because he wanted to go to a show listen to music, and be a part of something. Yep. It was a new feeling again, you know? It was almost like nobody wanted to break the ice. Because I feel like a lot of people like on the internet or whatever were, you know, still not doing that. You know, people were still inside and all that stuff. And at that time, Dead City definitely broke the ice. It did not give a fuck, you know? They're like, we're throwing the show, you know, generator, whatever, you know? Get as many homies as you can. Everybody's calling each other. Everybody's like, yo, we're meeting up, we're meeting up. Boom, like shows are back. If you don't fuck with that city, I mean, you must be living under a rock or some shit. <laughs> Not even just in LA. Yeah, yeah, going worldwide, to Oakland, dude. Going to New York. We just got back from fucking Mexico City, dude. That shit was a fucking city. mess, dude. A mess in a good way. It's hard to explain it from my point of view because those dudes are my friends before punk, you know? Like, before, i known them before they were a band. And we've done a lot of shit before they were a band, you know? So when we got there, it, it, it was mayhem, you know, before, we go to the show, it's like, all right, we gotta go fuck shit up. Let's go paint this, let's go paint that. Let's do this, let's do that. You know, and that's a lot of the shit that I shoot photos of, but I can't post, you know? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, I could, but what the fuck for? Those, those are times that you spend with your friends. And then Oakland, too. That one was wild. That was the most fire I've seen at an event. There was probably like two cars on fire at this wow. event at the same time. It was a pretty wild, wild ride with these guys. New York, this is the East River Amphitheater. And I think because of this specific event, the tiny world of show, the city decided to demolish it. So it doesn't exist anymore. This was, this is now in history. Wow. Know? That was the last show. Last thing to happen there. That was also a famous spot for punk shows through the 80s. Through the 80s. 80s. Yeah. I didn't know what to expect. I just saw an empty pool with a bunch of kids and it really took me back to like when I was a kid growing up in LA already, 19, 18, going to like gigs in the middle of nowhere. Kids with helium balloons everywhere. It's, it's just craziness, but it's like a LA, it's like if you, I passed the baton to my daughter just seeing it and I was just like, yeah, you're gonna expect a lot more of this as you get older. <laughs> this doesn't get any like, it's not gonna slow down. How old, how old is your daughter? Oh, dude. I mean, if I took her two years ago, she was 16. Oh, shit. So okay. I mean, okay. I'm with my kid, 16, at the one in Frogtown. Yeah. Just, it was nuts. It was like, a yo, good my time. My dad is on some shit. <laughs> <laughs> she had a great time. She yeah. had a great time. And then it was almost like after that show, it was like every other underground punk show that I went to had all the same elements of that. Yes. Like there would always be a bonfire. <laughs> then there would be people dancing around the bonfire, you know, and the bonfire would be part of the pit, you know. But I, I think what these shows represented to a lot of people and to me as an observer of everything, it was just a chance to be free again, a chance to have your freedom. You know what I mean? Like it was like everything had been taken away from us. We couldn't even, we weren't even supposed to leave our houses. 
you know, whatever, you know, it was like, and this was the chance that people had finally got a chance to have freedom and have their communities back, you know? But then it was almost like the police were treating it as a riot, you know what I mean? Like when they would show up. So it was like, no, we just want to listen to music, have fun and be with people, you know? Um, St. Anthony and the Snake Boys. St. Okay. Anthony and the Snake Boys, that's Cancer Cries. They scream Hail Cries um, after every couple of songs at this show. So that's like the anthem thing that keeps people going. And play with fire. Yeah, and play with fire. <laughs> and and, and the, the very last song, they always do this, the very last song, a song called Entrails, and there's a huge, like demonic riff that happens in the end of the song. That's when Anthony just walks out from the stage and he'll just start calling people from the venue out on the streets or at the back alley or whatever and just, he just start like doing his flamethrower thing and the band just like finishing Six. off the set with that crazy cool spot riff. Thank you for being in the show. I have a lot of respect for you and your work. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think that you validated the show a lot by being in it. Yeah. There's a lot you. of people in this show who are definitely big fans of yours and are inspired, you know, students of yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, thank you again for getting down in the show. Yes, and, sir. Uh, thank you. What, what was your impression of the finished product of the show? Uh, what did you think of it? Um, well, like you said, you know, like they're students of mine. It kind of looks like that, like if I was teaching a class and I was like, hey guys, you know, here's some of my work, you know, and go show me what you could do, you know, like, like this. And I just busted out like 20 years worth, or 30 years worth of work and was like, check out these flicks and, you know, show me what you could do. There's a city, go for it. And this is what they brought back, you know, I was like, damn, you guys did your thing, you know, like, Obviously, Esteban Oriol is an icon here, so I'm really happy to share the wall. And uh, I actually have friends that are, a few friends that are in the show. Oh, cool. Like all the things that I've been, you know, working on, it's this like strong LA culture, subculture. We're out here like resistance, you know, I just feel like, wow, this is coming together. So you did a good job. Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> Final remarks. Thoughts on the show? Fuck the likes. Fuck the likes. So anyways, those, I mean, they're all my favorites. I love all of these. I've discovered a lot of really cool new photographers in this space, and I'm just excited to, to get to know them and their work more. Probably one of the best shows I've been a part of. Um, I've been a part of a few shows, and this was very distinctive. You got to meet a lot of photographers that I've known for many years online. I got to actually see their work in person, talking with them, getting to know their work, getting to know what they're doing, and hey, you're a real person. I know who you are, and I've seen your work for years. I love seeing it. The zine topped it off for me, because then you can actually take it home with you. This work will go away. You'll never see this show again. That's your, your catalog to the show. That's what I loved about it. I think you guys did a really great job with like a lot of artists, a lot of people. Um, you chose well and everything was placed nice and I think it was great. I, I'm like really grateful and I'm so impressed by the amount of talent that's in the show as well. Like there's so many great photographers here and I'm so happy that people were active in shooting during this time. I think it was a time that was really easy not to shoot, right? Like mm -hmm. it was really easy just to kind of be paralyzed by the amount of trauma that was going on during that time. So for me, it was really energizing to see how many people were out shooting and how powerful the work is. I think that that's like a, a, that's like a very long lasting effect. And I look at all the work here and I'm just like, I'm so excited about it, like it really, it's really, really quality work. You could do a show like this every year yeah. to represent the year 2022. Yeah. What okay. happened in music and in culture in Los Angeles in 2022? It's a little bit of a yearbook. There are defining moments every, you know, every couple of decades, like, you know, in 92 it was the LA riots, yeah. you know? I was here in LA for that, I remember. Really? I remember saying, seeing things like, you know, right by the, the ATM machine and then like, better watch your back being spray painted on the concrete, wow. you know. I'm grateful for this show because of that, because I feel like you saw it too. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just so happy to be a part of this because it seems like we all experience this together and 
we're doing this in our own way. Having so many friends who I think are really talented photographers who hadn't hung their work before in the show made me really excited. Ostrid Soul, Nick Santana, especially those two, when I saw them on the flyer, I was really excited because there are just so many people who are talented photographers who don't think of their work as being something you can put on a wall and present. Yeah. And so it's really cool to have people like you, people like Ozzy Juarez too, who are like, hey, what you do is amazing. Like validate that and put that on the wall. You yes. Know? I really appreciate you doing this, Bill, because uh, it really uh, gives us a chance to um, create a name for ourselves. Every single photographer that's in this exhibition and every photographer in the world that is shooting the street, shooting anything, I think without, without photographers like this, you can't look back. Yeah, you exactly. Know, and, and history and learn a few things and be inspired by it. In a lot of ways, we're all kind of signing off on our disapproval of doing photography for the sake of attention on social media. I think everyone is kind of sick of that after years of living under these monopolies like Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and stuff. It's a longing for the days when photography wasn't something that everyone did in an attempt to get attention. It's a longing for when photography was something done for art's sake or for uh, the sake of creating an archive or documenting something. So uh, it's, it's kind of tongue in cheek, fuck the likes, but it's also at the same time very serious. Like, yes, we are photographers that are still shooting in this era of social media, but fuck the likes.